everybody, John McClellan here, ATX Hot Sauce. That's ATXHotSauce.com. Welcome to the channel. We've got a great surprise for you today. We're going to be making a cherry chipotle barbecue sauce. We've got all the ingredients laid out here. We're going to get busy. Hey, don't forget to subscribe below. We just hit 5,000 subscribers. Love it. Thank you for all the people who have subscribed. If you have not, click the button below. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get to this fantastic recipe, cherry chipotle barbecue sauce. It's absolutely one of my favorites and my family's and friends' favorite, too. I'll tell you what, the ingredients are really simple. I'm going to walk you through it here real quick. Don't forget, when you're putting recipes together for yourself, make sure you get a book to write everything in, because if you create something that's absolutely perfect that everybody loves, you want to be able to recreate it, right? So we've got ground mustard, one tablespoon, one tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of cinnamon, two tablespoons of lemon juice, salt, pepper, cup of brown sugar, some adobe chipotles, and just a small can here. We've got apple cider vinegar, we've got some blackstrap molasses here, ketchup obviously, that's gonna be our base, a little bit of mustard, honey, and don't forget the secret other secret ingredients other than the cherries is one of our hot sauces here and this is the big red from atxhotsauce.com and we've got a can this is a 15 ounce can of dark sweet cherries in syrup right and we're going to add this and make this incredible barbecue this chipotle barbecue sauce with cherries cherry chipotle barbecue sauce let's get started started the first thing we want to do let's saute our onions all right, guys, we have one white onion. It's a sweet onion. Uh, a lot of people substitute this and put onion powder in it. I don't believe in doing that. I think a fresh white onion really conveys a lot of sweetness to that, right? So we're going to add about two or three tablespoons of oil into the pan, all right? And then we're going to add four tablespoons of butter, right? Mix that up. Let that melt in the, in the pan for us, all right? Let that get going here. As soon as that melts down, I'm gonna add these onions. And I'm gonna kind of sweat them out with a little bit of salt. Not too much caramelization, just a little bit. We're gonna sweat them out for about five or 10 minutes before we start adding the other ingredients in. So let's get this, let's get this stuff in here. That's a good sound, isn't it? One of my favorites. All right, we're gonna let this sweat down. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here. You know, if you notice, I don't do the measurement on the salt, and the reason being is you want the salt to taste, right? Every kind of salt weighs different amounts. It's either, it's a big coarse salt, can be fine salt, so you want to make sure that you do this all to taste. So let's let this uh, simmer down for just a few minutes, sweat it out, and we'll get right back. All right, before we start adding ingredients, I want to go over a couple of points. I like to add all my dry ingredients first before I add the liquid ingredients. I really think for a lot of these store-bought uh, spices like chili powder, uh, mustard powder, cinnamon, things like that, that if you add it in there with the onions, it kind of releases that flavor, right? It, it kind of hops it up a little bit, lets it combine a little bit better. So that's, we're gonna add that first. All right, now we got our onions ready, right? They've been sweated out a little bit, a little bit of caramelization still going there. We're gonna add our dry ingredients. First thing we're gonna add, one tablespoon of dried mustard, one tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of cinnamon. We're gonna do about, so I've got two tablespoons of coarse ground pepper here. We're gonna add the rest of the pepper later, but I'm gonna add about half of it right now, okay? And those are our dry ingredients. So let's get those stirred up here so they can release all those flavors, right? I wish you could smell this. That cinnamon is first thing that hits you right in the face. It is absolutely phenomenal. And the color I got here, that's going to be a real rich, dark brown color. And all those flavors from those spices are melding with onion right now. I mean, I probably need to make a sauce just of this, right? All right, so next, what are we going to add in next? Uh, we're going to add in two cups of water. We're going to use three cups all together, all right? We're going to deglaze the bottom of that pan with that water just a bit, all right? Get everything all mixed up thoroughly, all right? We're gonna add one cup of apple cider vinegar, okay? 
and we're going to add our adobe chipotle peppers and this is you can get them in the store in the hispanic uh, food aisle section it's about 3.7 ounces of these you can add more if you like more chipotle you don't even have to put the chipotle in there but i like that little flavor in there right so we're going to add those in don't worry about cutting it up because we're going to use an immersion blender here in a little while to get everything all mixed up correctly all right we're going to add some honey in here for a little bit of sweetness all right probably about maybe a, two tablespoons excuse me okay that looks good right there and the cherries Make sure you get the ones in a can, and I like to get the ones in the syrup, and we're going to use the syrup and everything, and one day I'll get this thing taken care of here. I'm going to add that right into the mix, all right? Let's get our station cleaned up here. A little bit of, probably about a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses we're going to also put in here. All right. It's going to give it a real richness, right? All right, we've got all that added in. Let's get this. Let's get another stir on this. Nice. Now, as you notice, I haven't put the ketchup in yet. So that's going to be one of our last ingredients. I want to get these flavors all melted together um, before we put the mustard in. We are going to add one cup of brown sugar, though. Let that dissolve inside there. And we're going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. Wow, now the cherries are starting to heat up and it's mixing with all the cinnamon and the chipotle and then the onion. I really wish that we had like a, a smell of vision for this, some of the stuff that we make here. It's absolutely amazing. It really sets a room on fire. I gotta tell you right now, it is, it's making me hungry. I already had lunch. So our last ingredients are gonna be probably salt and pepper to taste. And we're gonna add one full 50 ounce bottle of Heinz ketchup is what I like to use. And I use the organic one. And we're gonna have about two or three tablespoons of just plain yellow mustard too. And then don't forget, we're also gonna add one of our hot sauces. This is the Big Red. You can check out one of our other videos where I make the Big Red hot sauce. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe below too while you're doing it so you can check out our other videos. This is kind of a mild, it's made with a lot of red Fresnos, some red ha uh, habaneros, some other great flavors, and even a little bit of beet in here. So we're gonna add probably, well, I like mine hot, so we're gonna add a lot in there, right? Remember, a lot of this is to taste. No, this is not baking, it's not a science. This is an art form, I believe. All right, let's get some of this mustard added in. And we'll get that all stirred up. Let that just simmer for just a few minutes. I like these flavors to all meld together, right? That's kind of what's important. You're layering all these flavors. So, you know, I know it's just barbecue sauce, but a great barbecue sauce can take a piece of pretty good meat and turn it into something special. Uh, like I said, our last ingredient is gonna be the ketchup. So hold on just a few minutes. We're gonna let this simmer. All right, we've been letting our pseudo barbecue sauce. Remember, we still haven't put the ketchup in it yet. We've been letting it simmer, melding all those flavors together, creating all these different layers of just sweetness and a little spice and just, uh, I, it, it looks gorgeous right now too. Um, after we add the ketchup to it, let it simmer for about another 10 minutes, uh, we're gonna take an immersion blender. We're gonna make it a little bit more creamy to break down some of those vegetables and the cherries and stuff that we put in there. So, well, let's get to it. We're gonna use the whole bottle of Heinz ketchup here. I like the organic and I like Heinz. It just has something to do with the sugar levels in it and the amount of vinegar that they put in there. So I think it goes real well for barbecue sauce. Don't be afraid to make a little noise too. Okay, it doesn't always come out at the end. So we're gonna reserve this aside and let that ketchup all come out. Add one more cup of water. So we put a total of three cups of water in this now and don't forget, with it, like any sauce, you want to make sure you're tasting it as you go, making sure that you've got enough salt, you have enough pepper, enough spice, you know, was there enough mustard in there, whatever it may be. But now we're going to let this ketchup kind of fold into all these other ingredients that we've had here. Uh, at this point, I'd probably let this simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes before you go to the next step with the immersion blender, or if you don't have an immersion blender, you can just put it in a blender. Um, one word of caution, if you use a blender with hot liquids, it can cause a, a problem, right? It can actually cause pain. So be very, very careful. Let your sauce cool down uh, before you put it in the blender. That's the great thing about an immersion blender. Put it right here while it's still on the stove and get it all blended up. 
So a couple of things I want to talk about. What do you do with your hot, your barbecue sauce after you're done making it? I like to put mine in jars and give it out to my family and my friends. Uh, we even sell some of this on our website at atxhotsauce.com. Um, but you got to be careful, right? You've got to make sure that you've um, cooked it long enough on the stovetop to make sure that everything's okay. In the background over here, I have a, a pot of water going with uh, some jars in it. We've been boiling for about 20, 25 minutes. I've got the can lids over here and everything has been sprayed with star sand to sanitize it. It's very, very important. So we'll go into the canning aspect of it as soon as we're done with the sauce. So stay tuned. All right, let's take a look at the sauce. I gotta tell you, the color is just, I mean, it just screams barbecue sauce, right? Um, all the cherries are starting to meld in with the onions and everything. Next step, we're gonna get an immersion blender, get this thing blended up real well, smoothed out a little bit. Uh, as I said before, you can use your own blender, not an immersion blender if you don't have one, use just a blender. But if you do that, make sure you let the sauce cool down first because, well, it could be a bad accident and there could be pain involved. So let it cool down before you put it in a blender. All right, so let's get that immersion blender out and start blending this out. guys now we've got it all blended up with the immersion blender uh, I'm gonna put the lid on this and I'm gonna put it on a, uh, on another burner electric burner I have over here um, so I can control the temperature just a little bit better remember you've got a lot of brown sugar in there you've got honey in there uh, you don't want it to burn on the bottom as you simmer it here probably let it simmer for about 30 minutes to an hour uh, while we're do doing that I'm gonna go through some of the basics of jarring this and making sure everything's sanitized so it has a good shelf life for it so hold on. All right, so here we have uh, an induction cooktop. It works with magnets, doesn't work with heat. What I like about it is I can set the exact temperature for it and let it sit here for about 30 minutes, uh, stirring it occasionally. Uh, but what it does is keeps the stuff on the bottom from burning. All right, guys, let's go through the basics. This is just the basics of jarring up your hot sauce so you can keep it fresh, right? You don't want to get anybody sick. Uh, probably one of the most important things, get you a good squirt bottle. Uh, put a little star sand in there. I'll put a link down below where you can get star sand. Amazon's a great place. Uh, but it's, it, it's a food safe, human safe uh, sterilization method. You just spray it on. You don't have to uh, clean it out or wipe it out or anything like that. It doesn't have any additional flavors. It, but what it does is sanitize everything, right? So the lids. We've boiled the lids and we've also been boiling uh, the jars over here for about 30 minutes. Uh, you know, 20 minutes you can probably get away with. Longer the better. And what we're gonna do is, when these are done boiling, right, and they've done long enough, we take them out, right, and we're gonna put this handy little gadget right here, so you don't spill it everywhere, right on top, and then we're gonna pour our barbecue sauce in, right? And then after we've done that, we're gonna put a tight lid on it, gonna make sure it's real tight, and we're gonna put it back in the water as a water bath for another 20 minutes and let it boil again for 20 minutes with the sauce inside. That should make for a really, really good shelf-stable uh, barbecue sauce that won't get people sick. And that's really the most important thing. You want them to have fun, not be sick. All right, everybody. Our jars have been boiled, sanitized, star sand on the lids too. Uh, we've got our sauce that's done. Let's, let me show you how to get it in the cans and what to do after that. All right, so the first thing you want to do is make sure you sanitize your tongs too. We've done this already. And very carefully because these are really, really hot, liquid out, set it down, now we're going to fill these with sauce and one of the things you got to be careful about is um, how much water you have in this pot when you go back to put all these in here because we're adding more volume of liquid with the barbecue sauce. All right, so we're going to take all these off and then we're going to pour some of this water off. Last one here. All right, let me drain a little bit of this. All right, now let's get the hot, the barbecue sauce into the glasses. Remember I told you about this neat little thing here? It's fantastic. One of the things you don't want to do is get barbecue sauce along the rim when you're putting the uh, lids on. So this is the perfect thing. If you just splash a little bit on the sides, it goes right down in the middle. We've also sanitized our label. All right. 
and we're just going to fill these jars up. Careful, you want to add, leave a little bit of headspace because it is going to expand as you boil it again. Now the jars are hot, so when you're putting these on here, make sure you get a tight fit. I recommend having a cloth, that way you can pick it up and get those things twisted on there real well. Remember, we sanitized our lids with star sand after we washed them. All right, got all those lids on there. We're going to trade out for our water bath again. And one of the things I do recommend. Even after you put the lids on, make sure you tighten them one more time before you put it in the water. There we go. And we're just going to line these up in here. Hopefully we took enough water out of the pot to make up for the barbecue sauce that we put in. The suckers are still warm, warm, warm. All right. I'm going to put them back on. And we're going to boil it for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. You don't want to do a hard bowl, bring it to a hard bowl, then turn it down. It'll still be rolling a little bit. Let it just set. And that's about it. Then you're done. You've made a cherry chipotle barbecue sauce right here with ATX, ATX Hot Sauce. It's atxhotsauce.com. For more recipes, check out our links below. Please subscribe. Give me some feedback, too. What do you think about this sauce? You want to buy some, go to our website, atxhotsauce.com. Uh, Give a review, whatever it may be. Enjoy you guys. Wait for the next video. It's going to be a good one.